Here's a lovely stretch bracelet. It may look like hematite, but actually it's just uh, metal um, sections, coated metal sections that have the look of hematite. It's cold metal. Um, I guess it would warm up as you're wearing it. Um, it's got no wear that to, to speak of. Um, and it uh, isn't stretched out. It fits quite nicely. And it actually has quite a delicate look um, when you're wearing it. Um, the only problem with it is I don't like the fact that you can see the white um, string, the white stretchy cord. Um, so I would probably restring it on some dark cord or some clear cord. Um, I'd have to, to experiment and see which is best. Um, but I certainly uh, am really impressed with the design of, of that stretchy bracelet. Then there was this unusual piece in the jar. It's a pendant. It's um, substantial, has a beautiful bail um, figured front and back. The back is uh, almost as nice as the front. You could wear it either way. Um, has a glass faceted stone in the center. It doesn't open, but it just has that construction that looks like it. It, it uh, is two pieces. Um, it didn't come with a necklace or chain of any sort, so I'll have to find um, the appropriate way of uh, displaying this on a necklace. Next, we have uh, another stretchy bracelet. This is uh, hematite with plastic oval beads that are kind of like the evil eye beads and li even little plastic spacers. They, they are pretending to be metal spacers, but they're just plastic. Um, I won't reuse the plastic beads for anything, so I'll just leave this um, as is and put it in my um, pile of uh, what I have to figure out to do with. Maybe I'll be thrift some stuff. I may keep it as gifts um, for kids to play with. I'm not sure. There weren't very many brooches. Or there were a few pins in the jar, but this is um, a nice gold tone brooch. Very solid, substantial, um, just you know, pressed uh, and then plated. No maker's mark. Uh, textured on the back with the uh, standard um, pin and uh, safety clasp. So it could be vintage, could be modern, um, not a lot of wear, so it, it's not, you know, it's not heavily scratched or anything, so quite wearable. Um, not my style, I have a lot of really beautiful vintage brooches, so again, I'll put that in my uh, what to do with pile. Then in the uh, uh, jar was this, whoops, <laughs> this exquisite cat keychain. It's got um, a more vintage style keychain, but look at the glittery Aurora Borealis uh, rhinestone on the nose of the cat and then the red glass eyes in the back. This is uh, quite a, a, a three-dimensional um, figure, um, but uh, cute, cute as all get out. And the back is um, got prong, is a prong set back, so I'm not sure uh, why it was made that way, uh, maybe just so that it could enclose the glass. It's an excellent shape and no wear on, on that textured gold tone. Um, uh, really cute. My Definitely my granddaughter's favorite piece from the whole jar. Uh, there was a pair of wooden earrings. So there were only, th I think, three pair of earrings. And the rest were singles um, in the jar, just uh, plain wooden uh, discs with a hole in the center on uh, fish fish hook wires. Um, again, my uh, thrift or what to do with pile. There was a wooden necklace that'll also go along with that. Maybe I can pair them up. Uh, bamboo beads and small wooden beads with a barrel clasp. No markings. Very lightweight. Um, it doesn't look like it's ever been worn. Uh, there's no wear on the clasp. There's no body oil or, or sweat on the wooden beads. Um, so I will uh, probably re-thrift that. Um, then there was this piece. And I really don't know what to uh, call, call it. Excuse me. 
it's a lovely uh, wide mesh chain mesh chain it doesn't weigh a lot but the um, end pieces are very heavy metal beads black glass beads some gold spacers and then this type of end that um, I don't know what it would connect to uh, it would have to hook into something and I think it's not really suitable as a purse handle you know for a little clutch that you would carry and it's not long enough to hold a pair of glasses so if you have any ideas of what this is for let me know um, it's so nice I'm gonna have to find a way to repurpose it and actually I think it would look lovely with this um, pendant if I could find a way to put the things together um, perhaps somehow join these in the center here. I don't know if I can put it on the table and make it do that. Just pretend here. There, how's that? So there's an idea for a necklace. Um, <laughs> except this back part's not too long. It would be a choking necklace. Um, but that's the fun uh, of uh, getting pieces that are uh, unknown uh, in terms of what you're supposed to do with them. Then there was this lovely uh, silver tone necklace, and it doesn't have any maker's mark. It's got uh, the four stations and then the center pendant with the little um, rotating square. Lots of texture, nice chain. Um, sorry for dropping it. And it doesn't have any maker's mark at all. It's on a lobster claw clasp. And I'm wondering if this little um, sort of triangular pendant at the end is uh, of any significance in terms of finding out the maker. I don't know. But a lovely little, uh, very wearable necklace. Um, there were some uh, glass um, pendants in this jar. Um, this one I think of as a sea star and then every time I, I look at it I'll go it's a lovely sea star and then I realize I've got it backwards. And I turn it over and I see this amazing flower inside the star. Um, absolutely amazing. So I've been collecting some of these glass pendants to remake them into um, statement necklaces, taking them off their ribbons and other, uh, you know, corded type uh, necklaces um, and reusing them. And I think this one will be, can be uh, quite a stunner with the right... Uh, you know some other orange and clear and yellow and green beads and anyway I'll have to show you those once I've I've uh, repurposed them uh, this a heart pendant was also part of the jar but unfortunately it has a flaw right here it's in the glass itself there's a cloudy spot it looks like it's been scratched you know how sometimes glass gets scratched but it's not, it's perfectly smooth there, but it's actually inside the glass. So um, I can't really repurpose this to sell it, but I could certainly um, use it for um, production purposes just to do some experimentation, see what kinds of designs I could come up with. So it was a little bit of a disappointment, and, uh, but you know, not that big of a disappointment. Next, there were a couple of purple necklaces. This one is very heavy. Oops, I'll take that one out of the way. This one first is very heavy. Um, uh, they feel like glass or ceramic. Maybe they could be ceramic. I think they're ceramic um, beads with a coating to make them look like uh, purple pearls. Heavy, a choker. Um, and a lobster claw clasp. It's not bright shiny silver, but I don't think that would matter. Um, there doesn't seem to be any scratches or, or wear visible on these uh, faux pearls. And there's a, a, a nice extender chain with a little purple bicone on the end. I think the purple bicone is just to coordinate with the beads. I don't think it's a, a maker's dangle of any, of any sort, but if you have uh, uh, different ideas about that, let me know. Um, I like this purple necklace better. Um, it's longer, it's lighter, um, it's a darker color, and um, I think it would be, uh, I would more easily wear it for that purpose. 
Um, it's got round plastic beads at the top and then the oval um, beads in the center with the gold spacers and the gold balls. It has a spring ring clasp, so it's a little older. Um, it also has uh, uh, some uh, strings sticking out that would have to be dealt with, but that's fairly straightforward uh, since I know what I'm doing with jewelry so I can uh, deal with those little ends to make it a little um, more polished looking. So that's definitely a vintage necklace. This is probably a vintage necklace or else it was a well-loved necklace. It, it has a lobster claw clasp, but it's, I think, a little older style where the um, chains were, were looped together like that and then have the little dangles. It's not very long. It's a sort of a choker length. It's very dull and gray. I have no idea if this is going to clean up nicely polish up nicely so I'm not going to spend any time on it soon um, but I'll put it away with this stuff to uh, do something with you know the what to do with pile the thrift pile whatever I'm going to call it and uh, it'll be around for a little bit on the other hand this chain nice bright silvery colored chain lobster claw clasp with no marking um, an extender chain with no dangle or, or maker's mark on it. Um, but it's a nice nice length of chain, a nice weight of chain, and it's nice and bright and very wearable. Um, as I'm looking at it, I see here there's a, a spare jump ring all by itself. So there may have been a pendant of some sort on here that's been lost. I certainly haven't seen anything in the pile of jewelry that would speak to that um, but uh, uh, very uh, wearable in itself or usable um, with other jewelry perhaps adding a pendant uh, definitely I'll be taking that ring off until I figure out what to do with it I laughed when I <laughs> saw this and I said oh no it's missing the the stone that was supposed to go in this frame and then I turned it over and this is what it looks like. This is a lovely little sparkly necklace, lots of rhinestones. The rhinestones are all there. It's open in the back so that they can get lots of light. Um, and it's marked um, JAC. I should know what JAC stands for or who the maker is, but uh, I'll have to look it up again and put it in the, uh, the video, in the uh, information on the video. So very wearable little necklace, um, you know, great for prom, great for a young uh, girl or a teenager who's dressing up for a very special occasion. Um, so I'm going to keep this one, uh, perhaps for my granddaughter or my daughter, uh, a niece who uh, might be interested. So another, another nice necklace within this bunch. Um, then there's this necklace and I really like this one I'll probably try to wear it um, this is a four strand necklace and I gotta get it the right way so you can see these amazing um, plastic coated uh, faceted cabochons I guess you would call it prong set but plastic so nice and lightweight and um, the gunmetal or the black coated chain the uh, gold chains of different weights and sizes and these um, what I like about uh, great what I like about these uh, stones is that they're sliders so there's a lot of movement in this um, in this necklace when you when you wear it and then it has beads some faceted rounds in between them uh, either gold or that sort of smoky color now, I noticed when, when uh, looking at this, that this is, uh, right now it's a four, how do I do, okay, four, four strand necklace and it looks fine in the four strands, but the, the, um, the connector itself is meant to have five strands, so I don't know if it's missing a piece, um, it could be, uh, I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is and see if it fits me, and if it is, I, uh, I'll find an occasion to wear it. If it if I don't like the way it looks, I might take it apart and uh, 
reuse the chains and make it into something else. But certainly this one um, centerpiece uh, would be fine even on its own um, on a necklace. So quite nice. We're getting to the end. Oh, here's another little pin that was in the uh, jar. Sweet little pin. Um, looks like it's never been worn, which is kind of sad because um, this is a patrolman, CAA, school safety patrol pin. Um, I'm hoping it's vintage based on the language. <laughs> um, and it's definitely a Canadian version. Um, CAA is the Canadian Automobile Association. You probably have pins like this in the States that say AAA, AAA. Um, it's got a lovely little uh, pin clasp on the back and the C clasp is designed so that it has a guard for the pin so that even when the pin is closed, um, the young person who'd be wearing this wouldn't uh, prick their finger. Um, nice little maple, sort of maple leaf at the top. Anyway, I'll put this away with the pins and if somebody wants a collection of pins to pin on a vest or a hat, um, I've got a collection they can have. A couple uh, more pieces. This is um, just a broken piece of something that had two things that connected to it. It's very heavy chain, a heavy metal ball that's already starting um, to rust a little bit. Um, so I'll uh, probably repurpose this chain uh, for hanging uh, a wind chime or something like that. It's good for that. Then there's this necklace and it's a sweet little necklace too bad it wasn't a Victorian garnet necklace then it would be worth a bunch of money um, it's just a plastic and uh, gunmetal inexpensive um, you know costume jewelry necklace lovely little pattern I would certainly uh, love to try to use um, Swarovski crystals and make um, a, a choker necklace like this to fit me. Um, I'm not going to take it apart or, or anything. I'll uh, keep it together. It doesn't have a very um, good clasp. I, I think it would come undone quite easily or come apart. See, it just pulls right through if you're not careful. So that would need to be adjusted. It might, I, it might just need some, some pressing together with uh, the right pair of pliers. Um, but so that garnet colored with the black metal, I think is quite attractive. And um, when you're showing, your, you know, a lovely neckline and a lovely round neckline, I think this would be quite nice to wear. And the final necklace, again, another lightweight fashion necklace with um, plastic beads. This is a Y-shaped necklace with uh, plastic bead dangles and some chain. Um, lovely plastic faceted teardrops, flat teardrops and circular teardrops, some discs, some gold on a sort of a, an antique bronze or colored chain. It um, has a lobster claw clasp with no markings and just a little um, extended chain finished with a, a little ball so I don't uh, think that identifies any particular manufacturer. Um, but uh, again, a lovely little uh, light, um, as in not heavy, um, and also light colored uh, necklace. It'd be a great little summer necklace to wear. Um, it, it's nice and delicate and, and it would go with a lot of different skin tones. So that's the final piece. I've hoped you liked seeing my first jewelry jar um, and, and I hope you don't mind the fact that I'd already been through it once, but. Uh, uh, didn't do a very good job on the video, and so this is uh, the result. Um, thank you. This is Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. I hope we see you again soon, and have a great day.